to, to flourish in society, you have to have a really, really low one. Low one? Yeah. Oh, well, that's great. <laughs> Cigar? Yeah, sure. This right here is what started Cigars of Valor. The El Perez. Yeah, this has been aging. Don't they look good? Yes. Mm hmm. Mm. Oh, scrumptious. Mm. Look at that. The wrapper <clears throat> looks at me. Yeah. <clears throat> Beautiful. <sighs> Lighting it up, bro. You know, so I'd like to touch on a brief subject today. Nacogdoches, great event. We went down there. That was fun. Last Saturday. Saturday before last. One of these last Saturdays within the past year. I don't know. We went there. And uh, a week ago. Was it a week ago? Oh, whatever. Yeah. Fantastic event. They had a, it was called the Rig Down. It's uh, basically like a car show, but with semi trucks. And, uh, pretty cool shit. Uh, a lot of cool Peterbilts, Kenworths. Uh, cool, cool Tesla cool trucks. I'm just kidding. No, none of those are there. We did meet a few people that were cool. Yeah, we got we got a little interview. We did <sighs> that was fun, and we met a uh, who's the trucker guy? Smoky trucker. Yeah, oh, yeah, guy. Smoky trucker. Mm -hmm. He was pretty cool. Yeah, hoping pretty to cool hoping to do a interview with him sometime on the Cigars of Valor stream. It'd be pretty cool. Yeah, we would like to have him on here. You know what we need to do? Hmm. We'll pop this on Instagram Live. Yeah. Hold on. <clears throat> oh, give me a second. All right. Well, Nacogdoches is fun. We have an event tomorrow that we're going to be at. It's kind of a game event. Yeah, we're not going to be there as Cigars of Valor, but we're going to be there as Cigars of Valor, if you know what I mean. Um, it's, gonna, it's a cornhole tournament at En Fuego. We're just going to be there in support of En Fuego, having a good time. It's going to be beer, food, cornhole, cigars. It's in Fuego Murphy, and that's noon to four, right? Fuck. Yeah. Damn it. See what you made me did? Yeah, noon to four. Let me tell you something. <clears throat> What's up? What do you want? You know, what do you want? This cigar is fantastic. We need guess. Uh, we we do we do need guests. We really need some guests, but um, the schedules conflict with a lot of the people we would like to have on this show. Uh, it seems like they're always working, or they just don't want to be around us. They're too cool for us. Yeah, I'm starting to. If you are too cool for us, we're coming for you. Watch for the faint smell of cigar. Listen for that faint smell of cigar. And for all of you that have ignored my messages online, other social media personalities. Everyone. Yeah. We'll show your man names. You've ignored me. One last time. I've reached out. 
And now I'm going to infiltrate your life subtly and painfully. I'm telling you, listen for the faint smell of smoke. I will be, we will be on the shelves in a certain shop in your town before you know it. We're going to find where you live. We're going to hand out business cards to every gun shop, every single Philly cheesesteak shop, every single cigar shop in your town, and you'll know who we are. Philly cheesesteaks are delicious. That's, yeah, uh, that does sound good. Right? It does. All right, so now that we're past the threatening messages and yeah, and our demands, and our demands. Uh, so, what did you think of the event last week, Ryan? What did you think of the event? <sighs> well, let me tell you something. I thought it was fantastic. Mm-hmm. It was two weeks. Fantastic. Two weeks. Ago. Fucking ass. Well, I mean, you know. All right, last week. So, I thought it was oh, great. Shit, it was. It was great. It was two weeks, yeah. doesn't feel like that. Damn. Well, anyways, the drive down there was beautiful, as usual. Go in there is pretty cool. Uh, by the way, everything closes on Sunday there. Why do you think we left? <laughs> everything. <laughs> and I'm talking like I thought maybe like one place would be open. No. It's no. a small town in southeast Texas. The whole town was empty. It was weird. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Mm. Mm. I would tell you something. So, I knew this one guy. He mm-hmm. smokes cigars. Yep. What about it? I can't do it like you can, man. <laughs> I can't keep a straight face because it's just so stupid. What, what were we talking about? New Orleans? Yeah, New Orleans. And I was like, I knew a guy that went there. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> yeah. Just nothing. <clears throat> I mean, I did. I knew a guy that went there. Like a week no, ago. We're not doubting that. <laughs> That's just <laughs> your contribution to the conversation was valid, but very minute. Well, Look, you see, in order to be truthful, such as a method of talking about New Orleans, you must ins- you must first insist that you know someone who's went there. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. I really drugged that out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> God damn. All right. So what was... Um, over the last uh, full moon cycle that people say doesn't exist, but for some reason everyone goes psychotic on. Um, what happened? There was something that happened here in Rowlett. I was born. Well, not just that, but... Where were you born? Dallas. I thought it's when you lived in Florida. That's insulting. And I will remember that comment for the rest of my life. I could have sworn you moved here from Florida. Mm-mm. Born and raised in Dallas. What? Buddy. We've known each other since second grade, and you thought I moved here from fucking Florida. No, you said when we were young, I remember you said, I don't know. We used to go to Florida a lot. It was a different timeline. You think you know people? I mean, shouldn't I say that? Anyways, so fifth time's the charm. Yeah. Um, 
Well, oh, okay, so what's coming up after Cornhole? Uh, we're going to try and schedule an event between now and the next event. The next event is November 8th at El Dorado. Yeah, we need to do another event there. But we're going to try and set something up between now and then because that's a whole month that's open. So, if you need us to ruin little kids' birthday parties or uh, adventurous barbecue joints, we're totally fine with smoking cigars there. Yeah. Maybe not the kids' birthday oh. party. Oh, the uh, golf tournament, the Mesquite Police Association golf mm. tournament. We're doing that. That's uh, Did you speak to October seventeenth. Yes, I need to take the check. Okay. Well, we're we're sponsoring the Mesquite Police Association golf tournament this year, and we will be present there with cigars and air horns. Yeah, and I'm going to be quoting Caddyshack the entire time. I like it. That'd be good. He doesn't know what Caddyshack. I don't. But that's not the point here. The point is, if it causes psychological abuse, I'm fine with it. Yep. So, Do you think it would be good to quote Die Hard whenever uh, Christmas rolls around? Mm -hmm. I don't see a problem. Okay. Because that's pretty cringe. Because who doesn't quote Die Hard when Christmas comes around? <clears throat> you know, a lot of people say that that's their favorite movie. Of their course, favorite Christmas movie. This is a fucking trend. That's why. Uh, it's, yeah. a, it's a trend. It is. Yeah. Um... Well, uh, our next cigar that's coming out is a uh, pumpkin spiced um, Maduro for the fall. It's got a twist of cinnamon in it. It's going to be a part of the Bitchin' Betty. Well, I'm pretty sure that none of the people that actually follow us are basic bitches, so... That's probably off the table anyways. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Pumpkin spice cigar. That is the most... You know, I never, I never liked pumpkin. There was like one time I had a pumpkin bread, and it was good. And I was like, wow. I like pumpkin pie. I don't really care for it. Oh, I had one that was really good my cousin made a long time ago. I remember that because I normally don't like them at all. Uh, pumpkin pie is pretty delicious. I like it. Sometimes. Not from the store, though. Well, no. But very few people make it from scratch. <sighs> yeah. That is true. It's kind of a pain in the ass. <sighs> so, we're planning on... Going to talk to a certain company down in the San Antonio area. Uh, I'm going to keep it all classified as far as which company. Have you talked to him? Yeah. You have? Mm -hmm. I, I need to call uh, him. Uh, yep. I and, talk um, to him I'll talk to you about that one. Sure. But we are going to talk to that company that you're referring to, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to see if we can work something out. And if we can get some stuff confirmed and all that good hoopla, then I will. That's been a, it's, it's actually like been a goal of ours. Yes. It's been in the works for quite a while, and we might be achieving that pretty soon. Um, so just keep your ears open. Yeah, it's going to be cool. It would honestly be one of the coolest things. Um, <clears throat> Let's see what else. There is. How's Juan doing? Have you talked to him lately? Oh yeah, he just got back. He just uh, got back home from New York. He was oh. up there passing our cigars around. There's not much hope in that area, but hopefully he got it to some people. Yeah, he did. Uh, there was some people. Apparently, he went to a dinner and had the frog or one of our uh, cigars on the table next to him. Mm -hmm. 
he said a guy from out the other end of the table said, hey, what cigar is that? I've never seen that before. And he said, here, try it. God tried it, loved it. Of course he did. Yeah, that's it. Let me tell you something. I have this idea for next next year. Thinking about doing like a Cigars of Valor range day. Maybe something like that. We go to a gun range, do a skeet shoot, do some some uh, you know typical gun range stuff, <clears throat> and uh, need to find a range that will let us do this. And um, if any of you know of a range or have a range that would be willing to have us there, please let us know. I'm sure, there's plenty. We will make it worth your while. Can we smoke cigars on the range? That's the thing is, uh, so many ranges don't allow cigars. Well, I mean, it is kind of a non-smoking business. But, like, if it's outdoors, like, who gives a crap, you know? But They literally have guns going off <laughs> in the gun range that produces smoke. Yeah, way, le- way ho- more harsh, like, for you. <sighs> so... That being said, if anyone, any of one, uh, any one of you know of a range that would be willing to do that, let us know. We'll bring you cigars. You bring your guns. Yeah, it'll be a good time. Fan diddly tastic. Um, what else are we trying to do? We're trying to get all kinds of stuff going. So, I got a question. Mm-hmm. You want to talk about Code One Executive Services? Sure. So, Travis and I have had this idea for quite a while now, about as long as a cigar idea, um, about a private security company called Code One Executive Services. And <clears throat> honestly, we've had a lot of interesting ideas, mostly like parody, just like jokes. And we talked about having like an automated system that you would call and press one for a hitman, two for an airstrike, things like that. Some full on GTA five <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Call in a number and get hitman. Mm-hmm. And uh, for a while we actually, uh, we, <laughs> we had a, uh, a service that would do text-to-speech, like you could write text and then send out phone calls to people. And Travis signed up for it and wrote something like, I don't remember what it was. It was very it, derogatory. It was very, you. It very was... derogatory, but he was sending it to me. It's a joke. And um, it flagged his account, and his account got closed. <laughs> and they sent me an email. A, it wasn't an automated email. Someone typed up an email <laughs> and sent it to me saying, we do not appreciate vulgarity in our messages or something like that and we have closed your account <laughs> like, damn oh man that's so good what did i say you go eat your own shit or something like that dude <laughs> i don't remember i can't remember what i said that was so funny i say so much her this no i say so much crap i was drunk that was funny <laughs> we don't appreciate you doing this. I don't appreciate you reading my messages. Yeah, it's supposed to be private. I'm sure they have to monitor it to make sure someone's not running Code One Executive Services off of their system. A hitman has been dispatched to your location. Anyways, yeah, uh, we've ran a few ideas like that. We have so many ideas, uh, some stupid, some good. A lot of them stupid. Uh, yeah. Just like ideas of a future cigar shop in the future. Somewhere secluded. Yeah. Uh, now we're going to confirm or deny that we might be working on a storefront. I mean, then that just sounds like you are, you know, like.
But you may see that one day. Just saying. All right. In no way competing against the other shops. Mm -hmm. I mean, so. It'll be off in a faraway land. Yeah. We'll make sure that we're fair to the people that have helped us. Absolutely. We don't want to step on their toes and drive customers away from them. But the, the thing you got to keep in mind about cigar shops is the regulars that go there, the fixtures of those shops will most likely never, ever leave that shop. Yeah. Unless exactly. something happens, you know, change of ownership, someone some something drastic happens and then they might leave that shop but there's been people going to Fuego since they opened in 2006 2006 What's yeah oh uh, joey popping up firecrackers outside it's like a slight gunshot no it wasn't i have a mortar up there i can throw it i'll do it no hell no it's on it'll be on ring camera We'll cut the Wi Fi. I'll do it on camera. No, nah, don't worry about it. I'd make the podcast interesting, wouldn't it? Throw it on. <laughs> Blows up a car. <laughs> that would be funny, but it's also, uh, we have a pretty good relationship with Rowlett PD. We don't want to ruin that. They don't even care. I'm just kidding. We're not blowing up mortars. To all fireworks, our not associates. actual military mortars. Fireworks. You don't even have to disclose that. You don't even have to Some people don't know what mortars are. They just think of a mortar and a... Maybe a simpleton, yeah. I know someone's going to hear that and think that. If you thought that was an actual military mortar, you are a simpleton. And you need to smoke a cigar. Oh, yeah, that's right. Cigars. Hmm. Do we have any... Uh, do we have all uh, all five of the Exo series out? Uh, still working on some final touches on the Night Stalker. Because um, I've noticed something. When we initially released the Exo series, they were all Toros. And I wanted to change that up a little bit. So... The Night Stalker is going from a Toro to a Torpedo. Oh. Yes. And uh, nice. just What's to the, add some variety. And do you remember the blend on the Night Stalker? It is a Connecticut wrapper with a Nicaraguan filler. Um, similar to the Concealment in the Concealment series. Uh, except it's not going to be the full Solomon shape. It's going to be tapered at the end. It's going to be a Torpedo. Um, the Concealment... Cigar is a Connecticut with a Dominican filler. When the Night Stalker is a Connecticut with a Nicaraguan filler, so it's going to be a little bit more spicy. The flavor is going to be more intense. I smoked one the other day. It's delicious. And in Fuego, we'll be picking it up. Cool. Nice. All right, talk to him. You know, we do need to explain a little bit on the cigars that we got. Um, I'll probably cut this portion onto the website so that we have something that people can mm -hmm. can actually uh watch and, and learn real quick yeah um let's see the cigar that started us the one that was our first tester that travis and i got and we were smoking the the moment we smoked it we knew like that this is it this is the start and that's whenever the idea started flowing. Absolutely. And we, uh, yeah. And I, honestly, like, I love the El Perez, but I have found that the one year, like, I mm -hmm. love the one year. I love the Broadleaf, you know? So it's just, it's awesome that it's just getting better and better. Like, it's, yeah. you know, we're figuring out new things that, new blends that taste better and better. Yeah. And, uh, so far, every new cigar that I have given to people to try, they say that every time we come out with a new cigar, it's better than the last every single time. Like I was, I gave out the Night Stalker to the guys at Fuego the other day, and they were like, "Dude, this is even better than the Ace." Really? Yeah. I need to try it. It's 
cigars. And that, that's when someone uh, made the comment that every time we come out with a new cigar, it's better than the last one. That's cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what you want to do. Absolutely. And uh, we will never change our quality. Nope. We've seen that happen to restaurants. It's always the restaurants that are amazing and you love and you just, you got to eat there as much as you can when they first come out because, yeah. you know, when they start making money, they'll cut their costs. Yep, they want to increase the margins. Well, and also it's because their their business grows, so that they uh, they got to find ways to keep the co- keep the profit coming in. I mean, just there's reasons behind it. But when they start cutting costs to the point where it's affecting their quality, mm-hmm. that's an issue. Which is something that we will never do. And uh, remember that if you do have a bad quality cigar, call us. Let us know. You know, hey, this one's not not very good. We would love to talk it over with you and work something out. Yeah. Now, with our uh, our Connecticut's, mm-hmm. we have two Connecticut's. Two. Right? We have, yeah, we have the two. Night soccer and the concealment. We have um, w- one of the ones that came out in the com- concealment series, and that one is the concealment. The concealment yeah. itself. Yes. So that one. Is an American Connecticut, Virginia, Virginia, Connecticut. Um, apparently, that's rare, right? It's on the rare side. <clears throat> it's uh, not too often you encounter one of those, and it's uh, it's got a spicy, mild uh, flavor to it. Mm-hmm. I've always noticed it has a it has a good spice. It's got like a kick to it. Well, let's clarify something. Uh, it's a Connecticut. Uh, a lot of people. I'm sure you can, you know, it's obvious by the name Connecticut rapper. Uh, there's a valley up there in that region of the United States that a lot of that, a lot of tobacco is actually grown. Mm-hmm. And I'm about to pull up a photo of it to yeah. show you how big this valley is. It's actually a really? pretty, pretty good size. They make a, what do they grow cigarettes? A tobacco for cigarettes? Is I don't keep up all that shit. Yeah, I don't. Nobody cares about that shit. Yeah, so it's uh, the Connecticut was another one that we had in our series that we were like, wow. And uh, honestly, we put it on the mild side, but I would say that it's um, maybe in tobacco strength, not necessarily, f- it, it's not necessarily on the mild side, but like on the flavor profile, it is on the mo- more mild side. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had Maduros that were less intense. Because um, sometimes the, uh, the, the tobacco is too much. Like it's not strong where it, it overwhelms your taste buds or something. It's strong in the way of like the tobacco in it. So it's, it's interesting. So yeah, well, he's pulling that up. Our, our other Connecticut is a broadleaf Connecticut. It's a Maduro. Mm-hmm. I never really heard of a Connecticut Maduro. Yeah, just Maduro is just it's. Been, so, like, what's the difference between a, a regular Connecticut and a Connecticut Maduro? Uh, fermented. It's fermented longer. Mm, I see. But yeah, that, that broadleaf, that is a dark cigar, and it is delicious. It's, uh, it's honestly, first time I tried it, I kind of felt like it was, it was almost like you smoked a cream. Mm-hmm. Like, it just had the, it had... Just such a smooth flavor, and that one's aged eight years, right? Oh, Sorry, it's aged eight years. Yes, the eight, eight years, eight years, and that's uh, phenomenal. <clears throat> oh, I'm trying to pull this. So this is a, a Connecticut. This is a tobacco leaf that's grown in Virginia. Oh. Cool. Took a while to find it. Sorry. Yeah, there's, yeah. So it comes from Virginia. So, so um, the veil. Mm-hmm. We have, uh, by the way, we have new uh, display. What are they called? The oh, that, the shelf talkers. Shelf talkers. Mm-hmm. Um, 
coming up on our boxes and everything that will explain the blends and which cigar it is and everything. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we're started rolling all this out this past weekend. Was it this past weekend or the past week? Uh, we started rolling them out in the past week. Yeah. And they look so much better. You know, in fact, I have some in here. Oh, cool. By the way, this is a humidor that someone has made for us. This is the veil. Oh, wow. So we're putting those on the shelves. All right. Yeah, so the Concealment Series is our first series of cigars. Uh, it was five, right? It was five at first, yes, and then five. we added one more as a special. Was it five, or we start before the... Dale, El Perez. The cover, cover. Espionage. So yeah, we started off with four, then we released five. That's it. Uh, the fifth one was the espionage. That es espionage is. was the special for that series. Mm -hmm. And the espionage is very unique. It is rolled with five different countries' tobaccos in there. So you get it in stages. And, you know, if it takes, I would take it, say it takes like four to 10 minutes if you're smoking it just regularly to reach the next stage. And every Every five to fifteen minutes, you'll hit a next. You'll hit a new stage on it, and it's pretty cool. It just it just mm -hmm. switches up flavor right away, and uh, it, it's quite an experience. If you're trying to figure out like what yes. you like and you want to experience five different cigars at once yeah. in stages, that is a perfect cigar for that. Yes, and uh, we're coming out with a new one in the Exfil series. It's called the Raider, and it's similar to the espionage, but we take out two. Yeah, we take out two of the tobaccos in there. So the Raider is going to have a Sumatra bind, or wrapper with, sorry, with a Dominican, Nicaraguan, and Peruvian filler in it. And so far, I've smoked that one, and it's intense. Just the flavor on it. It's different level do you remember our first um candidate for the one year i do um are we ever doing something with that that was an interesting cigar we might be releasing that in a one-off cigar next year it was hard to get uh, just because of the filler in there it was extremely hard to get a hold of but we we are going to probably be getting some more of that filler after the first of the year. And we'll. Uh, that was a very unique yeah. cigar. It was delicious. Mm -hmm. Like it was. Uh, I I never smoked a cigar that tasted like that. Mm -mm. It, it's it's as just unique as the frog. Mm -hmm. Like it's. Uh, it was cool. But yeah, you should be seeing that in the future. It's hard to get that tobacco. It's a small batch. Yeah. Uh, mainly just because of how the age of that filler, mm -hmm. you don't, you're not going to see it very often. Yeah, maybe in the future. Mm -hmm. So another one we have in the X fill, uh, sorry, concealment series is the Veil. It's a Maduro St. Andrews wrapper with a Nicaraguan Dominican filler, and so far I want to say that one's probably. One of my favorites are the ones we have. Just because it, the flavor on it, the, it, it's just top notch. But I'm not going to go into great detail on what you taste with every cigar that we have because everyone's palate is different. Yeah. Uh, someone can say they taste, you know, they get red pepper, or they get cinnamon and Or goat's shit. ass. Yeah, but it's all subjective everyone's taste is different yeah i've noticed that the very 
kind of unique and broad flavors that people get is the leathery mm -hmm. and the fig. Yeah. There's the fig and then the... Uh, get like a woodsy note, like an oak sometimes. Yeah, or a uh, dark chocolate or coffee yeah. or something. And now you can definitely tell if it's spicy or not. Yeah. You can get spice. Uh, but when people go into, I can taste cocoa dust and cinnamon and it's shit like that. It's like, it tastes like... Yeah, maybe you can, but not everyone can. It tastes like a six-year-old goat's ass. Look, yeah, right. there's a reason that we didn't release that cigar. I'm just kidding. We never had a cigar like that. Oh, that's what you're kidding about. Okay. That we've never had a cigar like that. You're not kidding about it tasting like a six-year-old goat's ass. Yeah. A uh, dead goat's ass. Six-year-old dead goat. 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 <laughs> If you can't tell, we are victims of the public school system in Texas. What's that? Kind of like Trailer Park Boys. Mm -hmm. For some reason, the inside's not on. Yeah. Maybe the heat kind of got to them. Oh, well. Smoke the damn thing. It's smoking fine. Um, yeah, so you recently went to Missouri. Yes, I did. I went up to the Ozarks, spent a week in the woods up in the mountains. Uh, did not want to come back. Hmm. If I could just, I could have just stayed there. What made you decide to go there? Uh, I've never been to the Ozarks before. I've been wanting to go. I've been to the beach 14 billion times. Uh, I just I wanted to go somewhere different, so we went up to the Ozarks. Loved it. Hmm. Uh, the drive up there was amazing. We took the Telhina uh, Byway, Skyway, whatever the hell you Where's call that? it. Yeah, Telhina Byway or Skyway, whatever the fuck you call it. Um, it goes from Oklahoma into Arkansas. And it's gorgeous. Uh, you're driving through a mountain range up there, and it's. Uh, I have photos, but photos do not do it justice. You'd have to see it in person. My bucket list is to go get an airplane like a Cessna 172 and fly through those valleys. I think that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. That was like playing a uh, flight sim and taking off at Telluride. Mm hmm. That's cool. I want to land there one day. It's a. Uh, have you been there? No, I've never been to Telluride. Dude, I don't know. I haven't been to very many places, but gosh, like if you. That area of Colorado is mm -hmm. like what I imagined heaven would look like. Mm. Like it is. Uh, it is uh, just uh, like breathtaking. Wow. Need to experience more of the world, though. but this was in the summer. It wasn't in the in the winter or anything. Did you say I need to experience more of the world? No, I said? need. Oh, okay. okay. You've been to more places than me. One place I want to go to is Montana. Mm -hmm. I really want to see what Montana is like. So I played a uh, Far Cry Five that video game, mm -hmm. and it was in Montana, and it was beautiful. Uh, by the way, uh, Brittany went there over the summer. Did she? And she said it was probably one of the most beautiful places she's ever been. I've heard good things about this state. Yeah. It sounds quiet. Mm hmm If there are any cigar smokers in Montana, please reach out to us. I don't know why. Just reach out to us. Oh. <laughs> uh... So, I did my ride out with our friend, a friend of ours, the police department here. Mm -hmm. Did my ride out last Saturday, and we saw something. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, we saw something. It's a perfect day, too. It's just like the right at the start of a... It was slow as hell. Nothing really happened, but... Really? 
Yeah, see, I have a peace cloud that follows me. It was with me in law enforcement. Uh, I'd be on patrol and nothing would happen. I'd go for my days off and shit would break loose with the other shifts. And uh, that'd come back and it'd all stop again. But I did my ride out. Nothing happened. But we were driving down a major road, four-lane road, mm. on the west side of town that goes in front of the police department. Mm. If you know what I'm talking about, mm. Rowlett Road. And could have just <laughs> I know just said the road. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Make it so complicated. But uh saw a guy on a motorcycle mm-hmm. wearing shorts and a t shirt, but wearing leather chaps over the shorts. Assless chaps? Assless chaps over the shorts. Amazing. <laughs> those aren't going to do you very uh, this especially when you fall on your ass yeah so we we giggled quite a bit and tried to rationalize with his decision of wearing shorts but putting on leather chaps over him maybe he just wants to burn his ass cheeks off I don't know man yeah that was we laughed pretty hard at that <laughs> It's like that, uh, that time with the Hayabusa. Yeah. Yeah. Turned out fine from that. Yeah. I did good. You didn't break anything? No. Nope. Well, came out. I walked away from it, so that was good. A couple, man, when was it? Like five years ago? Yeah, it's been a while. I think more than five years ago. I don't know, five something years ago. Travis and I were riding around on motorcycles. I, I had a, I had the 1000 at the time. Yeah, K5. I had, a, I had a Gixxer 1000 and he was on a Hayabusa. And I remember one day, or we were going on this intersection and I guess it was slick. It was like super I hit slick. Something. And there was a lot of idiots in the area. And so I just, I remember hearing like his bike rev up i was a, i was in front of him and i could see all the signs you know like the motorcycles make all the signs reflect crazily mm-hmm. like you know all the place and uh i just remember seeing like the headlight light up shit like way high up and i'm like oh man i look over and probably that close to the wheel on my bike is a hayabusa spinning at like 50 miles an hour and uh I was like, holy shit, it barely missed my tire and kept going. And I look over and Travis with his helmet on is sliding (laughs) face down across the concrete. And I'm like, oh, crap, you know, and uh, he goes over the curb. He like slithers over the curb. And uh, I was like, man, that probably messed him up. I get up and he's like, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, you know, I just had like tore his pants a little bit. Yeah. Like tore your pants and oh. it, it gave me a nice scar along my arm here. Mm-hmm. It's kind of faded away now. It's just it's funny that ripped my skin off. That felt good. Yeah, it's just funny that it, it was. It was a, luckily it was mild for the most part. Oh yeah, I fared very well for that. And uh, and there was a time on the Indian when that stupid bitch rear-ended me and then ran, knocked me off the bike. The same spot. The same spot. I don't. I don't go to that intersection. Anymore. Yeah, never again. Never freaking again. Yeah. I can't believe the same damn spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, uh, that's why I kind of stopped going through that intersection or going that area in general, just because of that. Nope, it's obviously a sign telling me not to go over there anymore. Uh, yeah, not even far from that, we got in that mm-hmm. head-on collision. Yeah, we were. Uh, just minding our own business, driving through an intersection, and that uh, dipshit runs the. We had the right of way to go straight through the light, and he, it was an intersection where uh, the service road for six thirty five was Web, going. Web Chapel. Web Chapel on six thirty five. So we were going straight underneath six thirty five, so we could turn left onto westbound six thirty five. Some rocket scientists. But this rocket scientist decides to try and beat us through the intersection 
and turns right on the eastbound 635 from the center lane, cutting off a car already in the turn lane, hitting and us he, head on. Like he was stopped there. And we were so close to him mm-hmm. doing f- like 45, 50 miles an hour or something mm-hmm. like that. His car, you could tell he went and you see the car under the hood. Like mm-hmm. it was like that. And then, you know, yeah. And, uh, hit him pretty, pretty damn hard. Uh, so hard. It picked his car up, turned it around 360 degrees and flew into the car that he cut off. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, we were in a Dodge 3500 and the impact was so hard. It shoved the straight axle on that truck up into the cab. Yeah. yeah I totaled that thing. Yeah. It diamond the frame. It, that was bad. But builds character, right? Yeah, luckily we're in that. Yeah, absolutely. If I had been in the other car, we'd probably been pretty jacked up. Definitely. But that's the crazy Dallas drivers who just not seen them. Yeah. Yeah. But fun times. We have uh, plenty of crazy stories Mm -hmm. that we can talk about. So, here's the deal. Here's the deal. We need to go to the gun range. We do. It's been too long since we've been to the gun range. So, uh, and to stay proficient, we need to go. And uh, I need to shoot that new thing I just bought. I've always wanted to shoot that. Yeah, same here. (laughs) Can we buy Dragon's Breath for it? Sure, yeah. Shoot it, catch the range on fire. Yeah. Yeah, we need to shoot that. Need to. Just got the other thing that I need to shoot. Yeah, I need to go send some rounds. Um, if anyone wants to come shoot with us, and at, at not just for that event we're scheduling for next year, we're trying to plan for next year, but in general. We're always open to have a range day with people. I mean, whether you're law enforcement, civilian, military, wherever you may be, we're open to shoot. Mm-hmm. We're not judgmental. We're not assholes. We just go to shoot, have a good time, smoke cigars, and just have a good time. Do a bunch of crazy stuff. Yeah. Tannerite. I'm just I do want to blow some Tannerite up. Mm-hmm. That was fun. What was the point of Tannerite? I don't know. I never shot it. You haven't? No. It's actually pretty fun. We, uh, my sister's old boyfriend, that guy that was a uh, state trooper, mm-hmm. um, he got uh, like $200 worth or something. Oh, damn. And we had this big pile of it. We took it out to, so out in Amarillo in the national forest areas or the national parks. So there's not really a forest out there. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's what, <laughs> it, it was a desert, honestly. Very much so. It was sand and like very minimal trees and bushes. It was just desert and large. I don't know if they were sand dunes. It's kind of like hills with sand on them. Um, a dune. Well, but it wasn't all sand. It was, it was a mixture terrain. of dirt and sand. Elevation uh, change. There so you go. He, we, oh, out there, you can hunt. You can hunt on the national. Yeah. Thing. I never knew that. But at the time we were out there, we were shooting guns. We were, went far off because it was a big enough place where, there, you know, you can go far off and not have anyone around. Mm-hmm. And we set this tannerite off. And uh, it was crazy. I think I got a video somewhere, but um, blowing up the Tannerite was awesome. It was cool. It was loud. Yeah. And uh, we I can imagine. we were driving back, and like all these uh, state troopers pulled in, mm-hmm. ID and everyone as we were leaving. Of course, they probably heard it. This is a cigar line going off, but we're closed. That's why we do this podcast at this time uh, of days because. That's when we close up for the weekend. And that way we don't have to sit there and answer calls the entire damn time. Hmm. 
But yeah, Cigars of Valor is growing. Uh, we would appreciate everyone's help on reviews. You can get us reviews or review us cigars. Tell you know, put on there it tastes like shit or something. I don't know. It doesn't matter. We just need more views uh, or reviews, sorry, and more uh, just so we can get an understanding if people like our cigars. For the most part, everyone tells us they do, so we'd assume that they do. But we like feedback. It helps. You know, like hey, this cigar I don't like it too much. Cool. Okay. And so we can figure out like what what people are enjoying, what we should uh, adapt and come out with. Absolutely, helps us uh, develop, mm -hmm. if you will. The El Perez never ever disappoints. Mm -mm. Solid smoke. Fantastic cigar. I smoked uh, the frog the other day. Was, really? I always, I always enjoy smoking that one because it's so different. It is. It's the flavor profiles on. My the, favorite uh, right now. World. My favorite right now is that one year. That is a delicious cigar. Phenomenal. By the way, the one-year cigar you can only get in the brick and mortars, mm -hmm. and it's a limited run cigar. So once they're out, it's gone. Yep. It's a good cigar. Well, we are working on a new band. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, it's going to be like just like this one, but gold. And we're going to foil gold the logo. But that'd be fantastic. And that would be yeah. for the special edition. Yeah, for our one offs, limited runs, stuff like that. For the special edition cigars. Be really cool. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to that. Let's see what else. Um. So we want to start hitting Fort Worth. So we we want to start going to Fort Worth, talking to some shops over there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're going to start talking to some shops over there. We're going to be in a shop up in Sherman that'll be opening soon. I'm going to go talk to another shop that's down in Abilene that I used to frequent when I worked out there. Uh, so we're going to try and grow cigars of valor this fall yep and, uh, our goal is to be in 10 shops by the end of the year by the by the end of the year mm -hmm. that'd be a really good idea yes be really cool um well i guess we can start wrapping up and mm -hmm. uh, maybe record a couple videos of explaining cigars and stuff sure yeah let's do it um all right. So here's the deal. Thank you for tuning into the podcast. We greatly appreciate it. Oh, that's it? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we were really excited to go to Nacogdoches. It was awesome. Met some new people there. Everyone's friendly there. If you ever, ever get a chance, go down there, check it out. Nacogdoches Cigar. Awesome. And uh, we were in Enfuego Murphy. Uh, we were in Fuego Rockwall. Both in Fuego shops are excellent. And we we're at El Dorado Rockwall. Mm -hmm. as a fantastic place. It's like a hundred year old house. Right? Mm -hmm. And at in Fuego in uh, uh, El Dorado McKinley. El Dorado. Oh, sorry. Yeah. El Dorado McKinley. And obviously Nacogdoche Cigar Co. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully we'll be changing that for the, uh, as far as growing to more shops by the end of this year. Yeah. And uh, still, if any of you want to go shooting, we, we, we don't have any friends. We need friends. Please. Yeah, who else is in? There's no one in here. It's just us. It's unfair. It is very unfair. But thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the support. And yep. uh, if feel free to shoot us a message. Yep. yep. Take care.